Welcome to the fourth part of the lecture. We're going to talk about plain strain formulation using a stress function and general solutions. Uh, for the plain strain case, uh, the equilibrium equation we've already seen it reduces to this form. Uh, we introduce the area stress function uh, similar to the case of plane stress but this time you see that since sigma zz is not zero uh, we introduce area stress function as nu multiplied by 2v plus phi comma xx plus phi comma y y so this is the only difference between the area stress function introduced for the plane strain case with respect to the one introduced for plane stress case and a stress written in terms of phi satisfy the equilibrium equation now for strains as a function of our stress function is the Hooke's law between strain and stress uh, this is the relation between the stress and uh, phi so we simply need to substitute uh, these relations into uh, Hooke's law. Doing that, uh, we get these relations for a strain as a function of our area stress function. Note that this time epsilon zz becomes zero. It's a plain strain case anyway. And uh, for the compatibility equation, We've already seen that it takes uh, this short format and doing all of the substitutions we get delta 4 phi equal to minus 1 minus 2 nu divided by 1 minus nu del 2 v and we know that del 4 is the biharmonic operator so basically the governing equation for isotropic plane a strain theory uh, in terms of phi becomes this so it's basically uh, the first three equations are similar to the plane stress case uh, but we have uh, a relation for sigma zz and as a result we get a different relation for compatibility constraint as well so in summary between the plane stress and strain case we end up with these two sets of uh, governing equations and uh, we need to uh, satisfy the boundary conditions on the stresses and strains so uh, we find a complete solution for a particle or problem and also if the potential function v is harmonic meaning that if uh, delta 2 of v is 0 uh, we get delta 4 uh, of phi equal to 0 and we call that by harmonic homogeneous equation okay uh, now we know uh, the governing equation for the uh, plane stress and strain case uh, let's see how to form a general solution now for bodies having rectangular geometry stress functions in the form of polynomials in x and y are especially useful so in that case the general form of the solution is phi equal to sigma m sigma n c m n x to the power of m y to the power of n so basically if the body uh, if the 2d body or if the uh, cutted um, cross-section from the body has a rectangular shape we can um, assume that the stress function has a general form of a polynomial in x and y for example i can uh, this this phi can be um, equal to m equal to for example uh, 0 to 2 and n equal to 0 to i don't know um, 1 c m n x m 
y n. So you said, uh, so it basically becomes for n equal to zero and m equal to zero, we have c zero zero x to the power of zero and y to the power of zero, which are one plus for m equal to zero, n equal to one, we get c zero um, one x to the power of 0 is 1 by we have y to the power of 1 then we have for m equal to 1 but n equal to 0 we have c10 this time x to the power of 1 but y is to the power of 0 and for m1 n1 we have c11 x y then uh, we repeat that for m equal to 2, we get c20 um, x to the power of 2 plus for m equal to 2 and equal to 1, we get c21 x to the power of 2y. And so, and um, similar to this, if we had uh, higher values for m and n. Okay, so basically that can be a general um, solution for the stress function of uh, such rectangular geometries. But pay, pay attention that for each term with m plus n uh, less or equal to 3, um, it basically satisfies the equation identically. Why? Because uh, the biharmonic uh, homogeneous equation that we had, um, delta 4 of phi, uh, it becomes zero for uh, because it, it contains fourth uh, order dif uh, differential um, with respect to x's and y's. So basically, if m if m plus n is less than four, or basically less or equal to three, um, the mm, polynomial can uh, satisfies the equation identically. Um, also. Uh, the linear uh, terms, uh, C00, C10x, and C01y, they don't contribute to the stress. The reason is, uh, you remember, this is for the um, uh, plane stress case. You see that we have second order derivative with respect to x and y. So basically, in the linear cases that we, uh, x and y appears only once or doesn't appear at all, um, they just disappear in our derivation of stresses. These are basically the linear uh, terms as you see. So basically the second derivative of these terms becomes zero. Uh, they don't contribute to the stresses. Okay, um, some important points. The derivation makes no reference to Hooke's law and hence the area stress function also provides a complete representation for 2D problems involving inelastic constitutive laws. Okay, so we can have um, inelastic constitutive laws uh, like plastic uh, plasticity theory uh, but still be able to use uh, area stress functions. Not all compatibility equations are satisfied for plane uh, stress, so pay attention to that. And they are all satisfied for plane strain. Okay, so plane stress, um, not always compatibility equations, not, not always it satisfies the compatibility equations, but for plane strain, we can, we're kind of sure that uh, the compatibility equations can be satisfied. Here is an uh, example. Uh, we have an n-loaded cantilever beam. Uh, you see that the beam has a rectangular um, shape. So uh, the question says consider the stress function of a polynomial form in x and y, as we see in the previous slides. Um, it is phi equal to c11xy plus c13xy to the power of 3. Um, it asks, show that this stress function can be used to solve for the stresses in the end-loaded cantilever beam shown in the sketch. 
you see that one end is fixed um, to the wall the other end is loaded with uh, p a shear force so basically we have um, shear uh, a stress or shear traction here and the cross section um, has with b and height 2c and uh, it asks um, to assume the body forces are zero for this problem so basically p is equal to uh, gradient of v equal to zero okay um, so think for a minute and uh, say this is a planar a stress case or it's a, a, a planar a strain case you see that the beam is not an infinitely long beam and it's not uh, fixed uh, from both ends so uh, basically along the axis x it can deform so it cannot be a planar uh, a strain case we're going to approach it um, in, in the case of planar stress okay uh, let's start with our given uh, stress function uh, we substitute it in our continuity equation it's del for phi equal to phi comma x x x x plus phi comma y y y y plus phi comma x x y y okay um, see that um, our phi is um, only a function of um, x and y to the power of 3 okay um, so basically phi um, um, uh, the fourth order uh, derivative with respect to x becomes zero and the fourth order derivative with respect to y becomes zero and also notice that um, the only term that is a function of uh, x or y um, with a power more than one is this term c 1 3 x y to the power of 3 but here we have two times derivative with respect to x but the um, uh, power of x here is one uh, so this term becomes zero as well so as a result we can say that del, uh, delta 4 of phi is zero so it's basically biharmonic okay uh, we already know that the stresses are um, given as sigma x x is equal to phi comma y y so uh, taking the derivative of phi with respect to y twice it gives us 6 c 1 3 x y for sigma y y from the equations we know it is uh, phi comma x x uh, the second derivative with respect to x is zero and for sigma x y you know it is equal to phi comma x y and the derivative with respect to x is um, so if i write it i'm gonna write partial partial y of uh, this derivative with respect to um, x which is c11 y plus c13 y to the power of 3 and now the derivative with respect to y becomes minus c11 minus 3 c1 3 y to the power of 2 
Okay, now we have the stresses, but we need to find uh, the um, constants. Uh, to, to do that, we have to uh, look at the boundary conditions. The first boundary that I want to look at are basically the top boundaries. Um, here and here. Okay, uh, so for y equal to plus minus c, there is no stress. So uh, traction is 0, 0, 0. There is no normal or shear stress at all. And since it is a uh, plain stress case, the stress along z is 0 as well. Okay, but the normal at uh, those surfaces, for example, in the case of uh, the um, top surface, y equal to plus, uh, to plus c, uh, this is the normal. So basically, we can see that the normal is 0, 1, 0. Okay, um, let's uh, write uh, the Couch stress formula here. Basically, Ti is equal to sigma i j n j. Okay, um, for T x i equal to x, it is equal to zero, equal to sigma uh, x x n x plus sigma x y n y plus sigma x z uh, n z and you know that nx is 0 and ny nz is 0 these two basically um, and ny is 1 so we get that it is equal to sigma x y from the previous slide uh, we know that sigma x y is equal to minus c one one minus c minus three times c one three x y to the power of two. Okay, so that becomes zero. Okay, from that we can say that C11 is equal to minus 3 times C13 xy to the power of 2. Okay, just pay attention that at that point x is um, it can be any value, okay? But y is basically c. So we can, for x, we can uh, set it to 1 and it becomes minus 3c13c one three c to the power of 2. Okay, let's form it for ty now. ty is again 0 it's equal to sigma y y n y the other terms all of the other terms are 0 so this one is 1 and for sigma y y we know that that was already 0 so it is already satisfied and for tz it is again 0 it is equal to sigma z y n y and we already know that sigma n y is 0 this one is 0 this is 0 so it's already satisfied we don't need to care about it okay so the only equation the only useful equation that we found was this one substituting it for uh, 
sigma x y it results that sigma x y is equal to minus c 1 1 plus c 1 1 divided by c square y to the power of 2 okay uh, now we need another we still have c 1 1 to deal with we need to uh, look at another boundary condition the next boundary condition to look at is the one at x equal to zero the loaded end okay this one uh, as you can see the normal is this vector okay uh, here we have uh, Traction, which has an element um, along y and the normal is along minus x so it's minus 1 0 0 for the traction along y we know that uh, the integral of that traction along y should become equal to p okay so um, just take that into consideration and then we move to use Cauchy stress formula ti equal to sigma i j n j the only element in t that is not zero is t y so basically i only um, work with i equal to y and i'm gonna get ty is equal to sigma uh, y x n x plus sigma y y n y plus sigma y z n z n z is zero the same as sigma y z also n y is zero and only we have n x which is not zero it's equal to minus one so basically it concludes that we can conclude that um, basically dp dy is equal to minus sigma xy okay oh uh, this is uh, basically uh, ty sorry the uh, a the area so dp da okay um just pay attention that da is um b dy and we know that the traction and their stresses doesn't change along the thickness um, from the previous slide uh, we know uh, sigma xy as a function of c11 so if i substitute everything i get p is equal to minus b in take uh, rating um, over y which is from minus c to plus c for sigma xy dy okay uh, it is basically equal to minus c to plus c um, this integration for minus b multiplied by minus c11 plus c11 divided by c squared of it y squared dy so this is from the previous slide taking the integration it becomes b multiplied by c11 y minus c11 c square y to the power of okay let me write it a bit below it becomes equal to b multiplied by c11 y minus c11 
c square y to the power of 3 divided by 3 and we have to substitute minus c and plus c there it becomes b c 1 1 c plus c minus c 1 1 b divided by 3 c square c to the power of 3 plus c to the power of 3 so uh, doing all of the calculations it uh, becomes 4 divided by 3 c b c 1 1 and that's becomes that's equal to p so i can say that c 1 1 is equal to 3 p divided by 4 c b okay so uh, the only thing that remains is substituting uh, c11 with 3p divided by 4cb uh, now we have to substitute c11 in the previous result uh, for sigma xx we had 6 minus c11 divided by 3c square xy substituting for c11 we get minus 3p to 2bc to the power of 3xy for sigma yy we had 0 and for sigma xy we had minus 3p divided by 4bc 1 minus y to the power of 2c to the power of 2 which we can basically simply write minus 3p divided by 4 bc to the power of 3 c2 minus y2 okay we solved it but just um, pay attention uh, if i get uh, the plane moment of inertia um, for the cross section i know that uh, i becomes 2c to the power of 3b divided by 3 that's basically um, the integration over dA for y2 dA okay and we already know that dA is b dy so basically um, this is the moment of cross section area okay you may identify that 2 3 c to the power of 3 b divided by 3 is basically apparent in these terms so we can simplify the relation to get this form sigma xx to become equal to minus p divided by i xy and sigma xy to be equal to minus p divided by i c to the power of 2 minus y to the power of 2 where i is the moment of area of the cross section which is equal to 2c to the power of 3b divided by three here's a summary uh, of what we did uh, we've derived the governing equations for isotropic plane strain uh, stress theory in terms of area stress function and we've used these uh, equations to solve 2d elasticity problems in cartesian coordinates